Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chain. Hey, I'm Adam Chain. And I'm Shoshana Chain, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by Plants. Plants. Today, we bring to you episode 302. The World's Most Powerful Superfoods with Katherine Arnston. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we speak with Katherine Arnston about the progress of algae and the superfood powers that they have. Uh, she was on the show back on episode 11, which was a long time ago, and we talked about the very basics of algae, but this time we took it further. We got into the properties of algae and the history of algae, and did you know that there is a new Algae Agriculture Act? And why this is so important is because we want to make sure that if you are going to buy algae, uh, spirulina or chlorella, that you make sure that you're getting high quality ones, ones that are not contaminated. And we think that you're going to be hungry by the end of this episode because we do talk about some recipes to incorporate it in because we just swallow them down or chew them and let our mouth get all nice and green, which you could try too. But sometimes it's nice to incorporate them into an actual meal. If you wanted to try some of the energy bits from the company that Catherine represents, then you can use plant trainers for 20% off at energybits.com. I know people are probably thinking, the world's most powerful superfoods and we're talking about algae well guess what algae actually is probably the most important superfood on the planet right now and the education you're going to get in today's show is really going to open your eyes to the importance of having algae in your life so make sure to listen to this entire episode so if you don't know Catherine, who has been on the plant trainers podcast episode 11 and we'll put a link to that in our show notes so you could check that out too. She's pretty accomplished and you may have actually seen her on the Shark Tank uh, not too long, well, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I think it was, but she is actually Canadian. She now lives in the US. She did her MBA and then she founded this company Energy Bits and lives in Boston where it came to fruition. And this all happened as we talked about in episode 11 and she'll review again in this episode because of her younger sister who was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I won't give that away in the intro. You'll hear it during the episode. And all of that led to Catherine really finding algae, which is the most nutrient-dense alkaline plant in the world and has so many healing properties that is really something you need to educate yourself on. So the last 10 years, Catherine, she's been researching algae, educating consumers, athletes, and wellness professionals about the therapeutic benefits that it has. And she's pretty sought after as she's an expert in algae nutrition. So stick to this podcast, listen to it, grab those recipes that you're going to hear throughout. And I hope you enjoy this one. If you want a healthy, natural way to fuel your workouts or fire up your brain, Energy Bits are for you. Energy Bits are tiny spirulina algae tabs that are nutritionally dense, a source of mental and physical energy that is all natural and causes no stomach distress. They eliminate fatigue and hunger instantly with no caffeine, sugar, chemicals, gluten, or soy, just pure plant-based nutrition. One ingredient, one calorie, and zero net carbs. I use them before workouts or sometimes just as a snack. They make me feel great and give me that extra energy boost I'm sometimes looking for. I also use recovery bits, which are tiny chlorella tabs. I use them after workouts or when I'm feeling hungry late at night. Visit energybits.com and order energy bits, recovery bits, vitality bits, or skinny bits and use the promo code plant trainers to get 20% off your order at checkout. The link will also be in the show notes just in case you didn't get that all down. Improve your energy, wellness, and waistline all at the same time with energy bits. Check out energy bits today and feel the difference. Your brain and body will say thank you. And now for a moment of gratitude. I'm grateful that we were able to head down to Mexico, the four of us, and relax on the beach, relax by the pool, play ping pong with the kids and do all kinds of activities with them. And it was also nice that I didn't have to cook or be in the kitchen, but really the time that we spent together in the heat when it was still winter here in April was great. I'm grateful for our family trip as well. It was really nice to spend time with our kids, ourselves, 
outside of the home, a bit of a different environment, which really allows us to see each other in a different perspective. It was really nice to just get away. Catherine Arnston, thank you so much for joining us on the Plant Trainers podcast again today. Yes, for your throwback. <laughs> yeah, throwback all the way to number 11, which is crazy. I'm so honored. Before we get into this one, do you have a moment of gratitude that you'd like to share with us? Well, yes, uh, it's both a small and a big moment. Um, I guess my moment, my gratitude is for my my soul, quite honestly, that whispered to me in the, that I needed to do something about this. And, and I had no idea uh, what I was doing when I started this. I just knew I wanted to help people learn more about plant-based nutrition. I had no experience, no education, didn't know where it was going to go, terrified out of my mind, had no money. But I just thought, there's something here. I, I need to pursue this. And I would just, I'm just so grateful that I did because it made no sense in my mind. It made no sense to my background, but it's making complete sense now. Ten, <laughs> it took 10 years, but it's making complete sense now. And my moment of gratitude is, is for my soul. And I would just urge everybody to also take those moments to listen to those little tiny whispers that say, you should check this out, you know, do it, even if it doesn't make sense. So, In- intuition. Yeah, absolutely. Intuition. Yeah. I, and I think I remind myself sometimes to listen to that more. As much as I already do, sometimes I need that reminder to listen to it more. So thank you for that reminder today. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so the last time you were on the show way back on the Plant Trainers podcast, number 11. So people can go back and find that on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that they listen, where they can hear more about the basics and all of these wonderful things that we talked about. You told us about this heartwarming story of of that, what whispered to you to get into this was because you were looking for something to help your sister. And it's just such a wonderful story and how you were able to build a business out of it. And, you know, four years later, we're still here talking about it, yeah. which is which is wonderful. So if anybody wanted to hear about how your sister got you on the path to algae, I definitely recommend that they go back and and have a listen there. Yeah, yeah. I just a little quick synopsis. I was I have an MB, I'm Canadian and uh, graduated from Western with my MBA was pursuing a corporate career, 25 year corporate career. And then out of the blue, my younger sister got breast cancer. Her oncologist uh, advised her to change her diet to a plant based diet because it would help her heal. They didn't tell her what it was or why it worked. So um, I jumped in said, you know, heck, this is my baby sister. I'll help you. Did some research on plant based nutrition, found out how powerful it was for your for your immune system. After my 10th book, thought, my God, I got to do something about this. Then I started reading more about algae and uh, this most alkaline plant in the world and 100,000 studies documenting its efficacy and it's a multi-billion dollar industry in Asia and nobody in America or Canada knew about it. So that was about nine years ago. Um, I decided I would devote my life to getting algae into the mainstream because I'd read all the science, but it was because of helping my sister um, recover from her cancer. By the way, she celebrated 10 years cancer free last year. Wow, That's congratulations. Awesome. So both of us, our lives changed dramatically. Um, uh, and quite unexpectedly, but um, I'm so grateful that I could help her. And I'm so grateful that I found my path. And uh, we're just getting started. <laughs> so it's exciting. We are now just, it's exciting. <laughs> it is it exciting terrifying for nine years, but it's exciting now. <laughs> was it terrifying in the shark tank? Was it terrifying? Actually, no. Although I was so grateful for the opportunity, I was um, because uh, only they get forty thousand companies applying every year, and they only accept a hundred to uh, to go on the show. I never wanted their money because I didn't want that kind of powerful ego um, kind of toying with my company. But I did want the opportunity to get the word out about algae. So I accomplished what I wanted. I got on the show. It aired. In fact, they've aired my segment probably six or seven times. I was actually at a trade show just a couple of weeks ago in California. And in the first 15 minutes at the show, I had 20 people come up to me and said, were you on Shark Tank? And I thought, wow, they have quite a memory because it aired the first time about two years ago. But Lo and behold, it turns out they had aired it again the night before. So so people, it just gives me credibility. It gives me some visibility. It was, you know, so it, I normally would never have 
pursued something like that, but so many people said, you should be on Shark Tank. So I thought, okay, that's that little voice again, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, must be something I should do. And I'm so glad I did it. So I stretched out of my comfort zone. <laughs> See, it was still a good experience. You mentioned that in Asia, algae is very common, very popular, and over in North America, not so much, but it's starting to grow. And I guess what we're talking about is spirulina and chlorella. Maybe you could just go over those a bit. I'm saying that because I I post about energy bits on our Instagram stories once in a while, and I always get DMs coming in saying, what is this stuff? So maybe you just right, clarify right. that a bit. Well, um, sure. Absolutely. Um, so there's a category called algae, just like we have fruit and you have apples and bananas and fruit and you have vegetables or kale and broccoli. So algae is a category and there's probably about 25 to maybe even as many 50,000 strains of algae, almost all of which are poisonous. Uh, if you, um, uh, and they grow wild in the ocean, they grow in swamps, they grow in your swimming pool. Uh, there's really only two main ones that are grown for agricultural purposes. And the first important thing to know is that these are grown in fresh water. These are not grown in the ocean. They're grown under very controlled conditions. At least we grow ours in very controlled conditions or triple filtered mountain, spring mountain water. They're probably the cleanest, purest, safest, most nutrient dense food you can ever put in your body. Because as we know, our soils here are so monocropped and there's nothing left in the soils for even the plants to bring up to give you nutrition, even if you eat organic. So uh, the two that we grow and that we, we, we sell are spirulina, which is a blue green algae and chlorella, which is a green algae. Spirulina was the first plant life on earth, or the first life on earth four billion years ago, and chlorella developed about a billion years later. Spirulina, uh, the reason why it's called a blue-green algae is because there are two pigments in spirulina. One is chlorophyll, which most people know is what makes plants green. It has lots of healing properties. And it also has a pigment called phycocyanin, which doesn't exist anywhere else in nature. And it also has lots of healing properties. So um, spirulina is technically a bacteria. It has no cellulose wall and no nucleus. And the reason why that's important is because it gets into your bloodstream almost immediately uh, because there's nothing for your body to break down. Not only are there no, is there no cellulose wall, but all the protein that's in um, spirulina and also in chlorella are already in amino acid form. So there's no work for your body to break it down to get access to it. And spirulina is well known for providing energy, physical and mental energy. So that's why we call ours energy bits. We're trying our best to make it easy for people to understand what these algaes are, how they work, why they work. Uh, and I can go through some of the attributes of spirulina so that you can understand uh, the, from a biochemical reason why it does what it does. But it has very high amounts of vitamin B, which of course give you energy. It's a vasodilator, which opens up your blood vessels so that blood can flow faster and get all the nutrients to your brain and your body. That gives you energy. It's alkaline, so all the hemoglobin can carry um, you know, travels through your blood um, in, a, in, a, in a structured way, and that gives you energy. It has a lot of iron. Iron is the atom that carries oxygen, and that gives you energy. It has something called ribose, which helps give you energy. It's the, a sugar in the, in the algae. It's un unbelievable what it does. And it also satisfies your hunger because it has not only the highest concentration of protein in the world, three times the amount of steak, but it has a very high amount of uh, essential fatty acids. So it's very satisfying, and that high essential fatty acid also is what um, one of the reasons why it stimulates your brain and your brain functioning and protects it. So spirulina in general, in summary rather, is a blue-green algae, has no cellulose wall, so has rapid ab absorption. Our first customers, in fact, were triathletes, uh, Olympic athletes, um, marathon runners, because it gave them steady energy, because there's no sugar chemicals or carbs in it, steady energy without upsetting their stomach, because it all gets absorbed before it actually even hits your digestive tract. So energy, focus, hunger, they use it for intermittent fasting. Both of them are ketogenic, so they do not increase your gl glucose or decrease your ketones. So again, spirulina, very energizing algae. So that's different from chlorella, which um, developed about a billion years after spirulina, and it is a green algae. That's because it only has chlorophyll in it. It's called chlorella because it has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. Why is that important? Because chlorophyll is a, um, a blood cleanser. It's also a, um, a liver cleanser. You know, I used to 
to uh, put uh, one tablet in a plate, uh, one of chlorella and one of spirulina. And w- the spirulina, when you added some water to the plate, this beautiful blue color dispersed evenly through the water. It was gorgeous. It looked like the Aegean Sea. And then the chlorella, it would just sit there and clump. It wouldn't disperse through the water. And it, you know, it was just this green mass. And I kept thinking, why are, what, what's the difference? And it finally, uh, I finally realized that chlorella is a fat-based pigment, and the phycocyanin is a water-based pigment. And the reason why that's important is the fat, all these healthy fats are what helps heal your cell walls and your mitochondria. And so and all the action for your longevity, your performance, is at the cellular level. So chlorophyll helps helps heal those cell walls so that nutrients can get in and toxins can get out. The analogy I make is like chlorophyll is like uh, a window cleaner. You know, when your windows are dirty, you can't see out and the sunlight can't get in. So chlorophyll literally is cleansing those cell walls. And that's why it builds your immune system, why it's so essential for people to have in their diet, particularly if they're following ketogenic diets, because there's very little, um, very few greens in their diets because they don't, they don't want, um, they don't want carbs. So chlorella is a, we called it a recovery bits because it helps you recover your health because of all that chlorophyll. Chlorella also has a unique ability to attach to toxins, and this is because of that hard cellulose wall. Spirulina, like I said, has no cellulose wall. Chlorella has the hardest cellulose wall in the entire plant kingdom, so hard that it has to be cracked at production, and we'll go over a little bit of um, some nuances of that. So what it does is it attaches to lead, mercury, uh, alcohol, lactic acid. Athletes use um, the chlorella as a post-workout. They use the spirulina as a pre-workout. And the chlorella is a post-workout because it pulls out the lactic acid so your muscles aren't sore. It also has the highest concentration of RNA and DNA in the world, which is very important as you age because your your RNA and DNA get, de- de- get damaged. And so this helps your cells grow back faster and healthier. It has something called chlorella growth factor. Um, chlorella is the fastest growing organism in the world, and it also helps your cells grow, grow faster. And uh, it is one of the few sources of vitamin K2. Uh, almost everybody in the Western world is deficient in K2, and we could talk about why. Um, and it's it's very difficult to find. It's only in grass-fed animal protein, a dish called natto, uh, and in the chlorella. There's a small amount in the spirulina. But the chlorella, you get almost the daily requirement of K2. And what K2 does is it moves calcium out of your soft tissue and into your bones and your teeth. And you say, well, why is that important? Well, because we're all taking calcium and we're all taking D3, which helps absorption of calcium, but the calcium is going to the wrong places. They're realizing it's going into your blood vessels. And that's one of the main re- causes of, of um, heart disease. They're realizing it's the calcification of your blood vessels. It, uh, so your blood vessels are filling up. They, they're becoming immobile. And then when you know some, some cholesterol gets stuck, then you have your, your um, heart attack or, or a stroke. It's also uh, contributing to all your going into your organs. So kidney stones are basically calcification. Uh, they're realizing a lot of Alzheimer's is calcification of your of your brain. Wrinkles are caused by calcification of your elastin. So it damages the elastin. So they basically cave, which causes the wrinkles. So K2 is the only thing that will move calcium out of soft tissue and into your bones. And so at the same time that it's being, you're being protected from heart disease, brain disorders, wrinkles, and other, other nasties, uh, it's building your bones and preventing osteoporosis. Um, 80% of osteoporosis uh, patients are women. So, uh, you know, again, I'm always big on helping well, everybody, but certainly um, women's health. So, so that's why chlorella is known to be a health and wellness algae, whereas spirulina is an energizing algae. Um, one get, keeps you up, keeps you going during the day, and then the chlorella um, is the the ultimate detox. It's a chelator, so it pulls the toxins right out and, and all the way through your um, digestive tract, through the kidney, and out through your colon. So um, uh, it doesn't let any of the um, toxins linger there. It actually pulls them out. D- d- dentists have been using chlorella for years um, to pull out mercury when they uh, remove the amograms because that's a, a very common mercury poisoning issue. So it's pretty uh, pretty amazing stuff. And the two of them are 
as different as night and day. And speaking of which, we encourage people to take the spirulina during the day because that's when you want to be energized, you want to be on point mentally, physically. Um, and then at the end of the day or after a workout to take your chlorella. Um, you can take either of them any time of the day. I have my chlorella morning, noon, and night because I love the stuff. Uh, I eat it with almonds or sea salt. But if you at least get into a, r- a routine of taking the spirulina in the morning or the afternoon when you're having a little bit of a fatigue and then your um, chlorella at night, you'll um, when your body is detoxing, when you're sleeping, you'll get into a nice, a nice rhythm and uh, it keeps it simple. I think that people right now are thinking that they didn't really know the difference between the two to begin with and that there's lots of different ways and lots of different reasons that they can incorporate it into their everyday lives and reap the benefits of it for sure. I know that today I was totally on the go and I had not a lot of time for lunch and I opened the fridge and realized that I what I prepared was a salad and I didn't have time to eat it. So I opened an avocado and ate half an avocado and chased that with about 40 energy bits. And <laughs> I'm not Good even girl. hungry right now. I mean, I've been drinking tons of water, but I'm not even hungry right now. Not that I'm telling people to go out and copy what I did. This is definitely not a typical yeah. day for me and not what I would recommend to other people do. But it's definitely been helpful to me. And you can hear the energy in my you could hear the energy in your voice too, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So yeah. I mean, you talked about, you know, how it helps do all of these great things for you. And I think one of the common questions, or first of all, before I go there, are there any other types of algae besides spirulina and chlorella? Well, like I said, there's thousands and thousands of strains, um, but I don't have all the that are not safe. Um these are the only two that um, we focus on. I, there is another one because there's red algae. There's well, that's actually uh, and, and there's um, obviously green algae, blue green algae, and there's a red algae. But I don't know anything about red algae, to be perfectly honest. So I'll have to do some digging around on that one. I don't know. I don't think it's very popular. These are the two that have um, been grown for the last 50 years in Asia, Japan, Taiwan, China, India. Um, these are the two that um, have have the longest list of uh, research scientific studies on, on it because I, I I'm trying to build credibility so we don't ever reference anything any benefits uh, that we don't have the science to back it up so uh, these are the only these are the two that are 99 percent of what um, of the algae that people are using referencing and um, they're the two that we we focus on why is it so much more popular in Asia is it availability is it culture how come it's not so available or how come it's so not so well known here in North America? Um, well, that's a great question. And, and the answer is both of those availability and culture. There's a longer story about why chlorella started in Japan. And if we have time, I can I can go through that. But uh, um, they were the first ones to to grow it. I'll give you just a teeny little backstory. So after the Hiroshima War, the Americans um, sent a lot of food over to the Japanese to help them, you know, because they didn't have any food because of the bomb. And one of the things they sent them, interestingly, was chlorella. And there's another story, backstory to that. Anyways, they sent it to them because of the high protein content. But it turns out that everybody who received the chlorella healed from the radiation poisoning. So this is now back in 1948. So the Carnegie Institute, the Rockefeller Institute, and the U.S. government said, Oh, gosh, what was that stuff? We, we should research it. So they spent three years researching chlorella algae, decided it was the answer to America's hunger issue at the time, built the very first production plant actually here in Boston for mass consumption, but typical, only gave it a year to get up to speed, which, you know, nobody had ever grown algae for mass consumption. So after a year, and I have all the papers showing all the history of how they grew this stuff, um, they shut it down. So then the Japanese said, well, heck, you know, if you you guys aren't going to figure out how to grow that stuff. You know, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Uh, they said, well, we'll give it a shot. So so all the research was shipped over to Japan because effectively it had saved their people from radiation poisoning. And they devoted 10 years to learning how to grow chlorella algae and they finally for, for mass consumption. So they and they nailed it. That's why the algae industry is based in Asia. It was because of Japan. And I'm so grateful that they did this. And then um, and over time, the, the knowledge of, of chlorella uh, grew to you know, China and, and uh, uh, India. And um, you know, spirulina had been grown for hundreds of years in Mexico and Africa. And so some countries started growing spirulina as well, although Japan pretty much focuses on chlorella. So just like we have, you know, beef 
all over beef farms all over um you you, you in your whatever culture you live whatever country you live in is it, you know the uh, awareness of something is based on what's in your own community and what's being served to you in either restaurants or by your family or available for gro- in, in grocery stores so uh, in Japan, they don't take supplements. They take chlorella every day because it's known for preventing things like, you know, heart disease and cancer and stopping colds. They use it um, in the tablet form as we sell it. They also have it in powder form, and they also put it into other packaged goods. So it's just it's everywhere in Asia. So not only did it start growing there 50 years ago, um, it's used in so many. Um, it's just a normal thing. We you know we have Starbucks coffee. They have they have spirulina and chlorella. It's just a normal part of life. In other countries, things like uh, you know I drink yerba mate, and that's a the national drink of I think Venezuela, and you know it's just made its way into America maybe 10 or 20 years ago. Kiwa is ne- was never known here for years. Chia seed has been used in you know Peru for you know, centuries, and now it's in everything. So so it's common in Asia because that's where it's grown and it's used and available pretty much everywhere um, in in their foods and in their grocery stores and in their restaurants. Now, the reason why it hasn't taken off in, in America, and I, st- I was concerned about this when I started down this path, it was like, why me? Why, why, why hasn't it been popular to date? There's a couple of reasons. First of all, because it's so big of a c- crop in Asia and all the customers are there, a lot of the you know, for the first 40 or 50 years being sold, it being sold here, it just almost had exactly the same packaging as the Asian packaging, maybe converted into English, but really did not take into account how to brand it and, and explain it and package it in a way that it would be consumer friendly. So it, a lot of the algae for the first 40 or 50 years looked was looked exactly like you would find in an Asian pharmacy in the bottom shelf full of dust and you who knows what it would have in there so so that's number one number two is a lot of the algae that was being imported into the united states was coming from china and the quality was really poor and they there were all kinds of binders and so um i, I think a lot of companies you know people if they did try it were concerned about the quality issue so it didn't take off for that reason no one has really ever educated consumers or practitioners about the true science of algae the science is there but it hasn't made its way out of the scientific world into the consumer world you know scientists like to talk to other scientists and I'm sort of I have a half you know scientific brain and I have, you know the other half you know very creative so I, I'm I dug through all this science as much as I could get my hands on and try to understand why this was working different attributes different different nutrients and what they did in the body so I could explain it to people in sort of layman's terms so so the education of the consumer is only beginning now because of some of the efforts I've been doing and you know hopefully this will you know encourage other people to do the same thing. And the other thing is that, you know, it's just um, there's no patent on, on algae. I mean, it's, it's, it's like broccoli or kale. So bio, bio, the biotech companies were interested in building this into a marketplace. And as we all know, the big food companies do not develop new markets. They wait for some passionate little entrepreneur like me, and there's thousands of people like me. I'm certainly not the only one. We start something because usually something happened to our fa- us or our family member, and we discovered something new, and we wanted to help other people. So, you know, we, we put in the, the passion and the the work and the research and the time to build something. And eventually then the big companies see an opportunity and then they buy all the little companies because then the little company needs some help to get into distribution markets. So big companies weren't going to pursue this because the education and the market hadn't been developed. Big, you know, pharma or biotechs aren't, there's nothing to protect them. Um, And then all the other pieces about the packaging, the branding, the quality. Um, But, but, you know, just, very fact, I don't know, you may not be aware, but in, in Canada, but um, just a couple of months ago in January, the uh, U.S. government, uh, you know, the president signed into into legislation the very first Algae Agricultural Act as part of the Farm Bill, because even the legislators are recognizing that algae is the most nutrient dense food in the world, is the most sustainable crop in the world. And guess what? It's all grown in Asia. None of it's grown here, or virtually none of it. So even, you know, it's even trickling up to very high levels. You're going to start to see algae become a very 
prominent part of our um, food chain. At least I certainly hope so. It may well take another 10 or 20 years. I don't care. I will stay the, the course because um, this is a game changer for people's health. People that don't have access to proper nutrition, it's the most sustainable crop. Uh, it will protect the oceans. People are buying fish oil. They should be eating algae instead. Uh, anyways, it's it's um, I've got the earth on my mind because Earth Day is coming up, and um, we just finished a, a blog about it. So um, algae is amazing and can grow anywhere because it grows in in fresh water. It doesn't need land. It's just you know plunk the. It's complicated to grow, but you can grow it anywhere. So yeah, so it's not here because no one's explained it and um, ex- and made sure the quality was good and stayed the course to make sure people could have access to it. So that's my question because it's going to continue to grow and more and more algae is going to become available and people are going to start looking to get their hands on chlorella or spirulina. How do they know or what do they look for in terms of making sure they're getting a quality product? Yes, that's a very good question. So um, some of the growing techniques you want to look out for, um, uh, I'm a purist and I believe algae should be grown outdoors. There's another um, technique called fermented and these are, uh, it's grown in tanks indoors and I can send you a, a summary about um, the, the, the quality of the nutrients is, is lower than out, outdoor grown algae. The chlorella isn't cracked properly. So you want to check, first of all, the source of the algae. A lot of the cheaper algae will be coming from China, and these are the ones you want to be careful of because um, they often uh, will use binders or they will uh, use, you know, grind. I've, got, I've seen pictures of ground up rocks mixed in with the algae to fill up the, the little um, gel caps. So I'm not saying that everybody does that, but um, and very often, in fact, in most cases, they use flash heat. This is because they have to heat, they have to dry the algae very quickly because they're a you know a volume producer, and that kills the enzymes and modifies, reduces the quality of the um, nutrients. So you don't necessarily want it from China. Taiwan is world recognized for having the highest quality algae, um, and you want things that are. Um, algae that's not using high heat you want you want to be sure there aren't any binders included in the algae that's why i prefer we use just the pressed algae there's no binders it just presses it stays um you know compact itself and we don't put it in gel caps because i don't trust those uh you want to be sure that um the packaging is dark because uh, chlor- chlorophyll will be pulled out from sunlight. We use 99% pr- UV protected bags, or the bottles should be dark. Uh, what are some of the other things? Well, let's let's dwell a little bit on chlorella. Remember, I mentioned that it has the hardest cellulose wall in the plant kingdom, and it has to be cracked to production. So when I was starting the company, I I um, knew that the main technique everybody used was to tumble the, the chlorella with glass beads. Now, this was the technique that was uh, patented by a company called Sun Chlorella. They're the granddaddy of chlorella. And I'm grateful for them for starting the entire industry. But um, they tumble the, gla- the chlorella with glass beads, and, and the glass heats up, and lead from the glass um, gets into the chlorella. Now, they used to deny this, and then the state of California tested their chlorella about 10 years ago, right around when I was starting my company, and they found that it did indeed exceed um, their standards for how much lead w- would be allowed. And I tell my team, well, how much lead is okay? And I'm, you know, that would be zero. <laughs> so um, they were told by the state of California to either put a warning on the packaging or stop selling, which they put a warning on the packaging, and you could still buy their pr- their products in Whole Foods. And I, I sort of say, shame on Whole Foods for selling a product that's known to have lead in it. Um, so I, you know, I started this company just to help my sister, and then I, you know, wanted to help more people. So, you know, that's my modus operandi. I, I wasn't didn't do this to make a big bunch of bucks. Um, so I thought, well, I can't put lead in people's bodies. There's got to be another technique for cracking chlorella, and indeed there is. It was an, it's a newer technique. It's more expensive, and we um, pass the chlorella through a sound chamber. So it's the vibrations that are cracking the chlorella. Um, so there's no lead, no heat. Um, and someone said, oh, you've got good vibrations in your chlorella. So <laughs> I was kind of happy about that. But these are some of the nuances that you want to be careful of when you buy your algae. Also, um, we because we sell our algae through um, practitioners, these are um, doctors, nutritionists, chiropractors, functional medicine, homeopaths, um, they need to be absolutely sure that we have a pure toxin-free 
product because they can't be recommending it to their patients. So we do third-party lab tests here in the U.S. Uh, we make those lab tests available to any practitioner. We don't make them available to consumers because it could they could be misunderstood. So um, if anyone does want the third-party lab tests, we're happy to send it to your practitioner. Um, but um, but that again, I don't, I'm not aware of anybody else that's doing the third-party lab test. We we want to be sure that everyone knows that um, we're we have the cleanest, purest, nutrient dense. Um, algae that you can that you can buy. So you talk a little bit about some of the other methods that other companies have used to put it together or make it consumable. How can you just remind us for those people who aren't going back to number eleven, how, how you make your bits? Well, um, we, well, we just we just grow the algae is grown. Um, there are different t- types of we, I call them tanks. Spirulina um, grows in a long, narrow. It grows in spirals. So you have a water, shallow water tank, and this you start. You actually start them in a little test tube indoors, and then you plant them outdoors, and then they grow from one. The spirulina grows from one end of the tank to the other, and then it's it's kind of looks like seaweed at that point, and then it's just um, they use a shoot similar to if anyone's ever grown, you know, driven through Saskatchewan or the prairies where they you know drying their wheat, they just shoot it up into the air to dry and then it dries into a powder and then the powder is taken into a, 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 a sort of production p- facility i guess you, if you want to name it that and it's just pressed it's just pressed into these little tablets there's nothing used to contain it just it's just the water's just pressed out of it and then we import the algae from taiwan in large containers um so there it's not a ir- ir- irradiated i can't know if i can say that correctly um and we package everything here in the united states in a fda approved facility it's got nsf certification um into either the single servings or or we do the the bags so all the packaging is done here and we that's why we do the tests on every batch every year before we um start the packaging and then of course we have expiry dates on uh, on the packaging i will point out regarding the packet the expiry dates by law by fda regulations we have to put expiry dates on there but quite honestly technically algae never goes bad you could have a bag yeah, uh, in your closet for 20 years, and it would still you could still use it. It would you would still get all the you know most of the benefits. May not taste quite as fresh as if as if it was brand new. Um, and it's this is a, a sort of an interesting feature of algae. In fact, it's probably the only crop that I'm aware of that also never dies when the growing conditions uh, deteriorate. So you know if you have corn or tomatoes or pretty much anything, if you don't have sunlight or water, then the 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 crop shrivels up and dies. And chlorella doesn't, or algae doesn't do that. It just goes dormant. And then until the growing conditions improve again, and uh, a sort of little interesting side note, I was reading about uh, some, uh, some in the National Geographic, some people went up to Antarctica and they found a chunk of uh, ice from, you know, dated back to 4 billion years or 3 billion years. And they brought it back to their lab and they noticed there was some algae there. So they they chipped it off and put it into a petri dish, and um, put some water in it. And wouldn't you know, it started growing again. So, <laughs> so you know, algae is a remarkable, unique single cell organism. You know, I think there's something special that's uh, about something that was the first life on Earth, um, and it's still here. So um, it's just you know hasn't been understood or it's been misunderstood. It, I cringe every time someone calls it pond scum. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned your packaging, and I know it's been changed not too long ago, and it looks really, really good. We've been using energy bits. We've been using uh, recovery bits for four or five years now, and I know that when I go to my triathlons or my marathons, I always carry those single-serving tins with me. Oh, yeah. And right before the race, I pop a whole bunch of them in my mouth, and I just chew good them. Good stuff. Yeah. And then my whole mouth turns green yeah. and people yeah. around me look at me like I'm foaming and going crazy. Yeah. Did you burp that up when you're swimming? <laughs> no, it, it works. It works really yeah. nicely. And yeah. uh, it's a lot of fun, but it's a good conversation starter. Yeah. And so that's one way to do it, just popping them in your mouth, or swallowing them or chewing them. I know I've also used them in smoothies to make that green color really get strong. Yeah. Are there any other recipes or ways that you would suggest people could use their algae? Well, we're going to start um, a, a recipe series um, because we want to help people learn how to use it. It's just you know we're a small t- company; it just takes time to um, to you know, do do all the research and then try it out. I will say 
the spirulina um, is a is a flavor that takes some getting used to. It's very earthy, for sure. very, very chewy because of the protein and the essential fatty acids. So, uh, you know, I'll be completely honest. Most people swallow that one. Yeah. And, you know, there's no shame in it all. In fact, uh, we have these stickers. We don't take them to every trade show, but we're going to a fitness show in a couple of weeks. So, uh, and the stickers and the headband say, it's okay to swallow. We're, you know, a little sassy. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Family show, yeah. yeah. No, no, we, we, we don't. We were very careful, but we we took them to a paleo show and we took them to a keto show, and uh, this is a you know serious uh, weightlifting kind of you know fitness show. That's so, cute, yeah. anyways, it's it's a little tongue in cheek. So most people do, I will say, swallow the spirulina, but they are totally chewable because they're you know they're food. However. Fortunately, almost everybody likes the chlorella, and I have discovered that it tastes absolutely delicious, and I urge you to try this, with some sea salt on it. So now it's t- it tastes more like almost like a nut, um, and then if you want to take it up a notch to improve the flavor even more, then have it sea salt and some dry roasted almonds. Oh man, now you're talking like a fantastic snack and yet it gets even better if you take it one more notch up and you add the spirit that's the chlorella it's only the chlorella that tastes good with these things chlorella sea salt and macadamia nuts Mm. omg i tell you if you close your eyes you chew those two together you swear you're eating potato chips it's off the charts and i'm not saying this just because it's my product it's unbelievable and we're going to be launching next year a whole series of of uh trail mixes that are uh, you know mixed with the almonds or the the chlorella it also tastes chlorella tastes great with anything coconut chips chips of dark chocolate my sister uh texted me the other day she says oh this tastes great with gouda cheese uh, i taste great with banana you know dry banana chips slices of fruit I think chlorella is 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 going to is just going to explode because it tastes delicious. It doesn't stick to your teeth like the spirulina. When you throw on some sea salt or mix it up with something that's got some uh, really healthy fat or a little bit of healthy sugar, it takes on this really fabulous um, combination of flavors. So um, that I would really encourage people to try that because if you can start to learn to like chewing the algae, now it's clearly a snack. And it's the healthiest snack you'll ever put in your mu- in your body, and you're getting all these great benefits while you're enjoying, you know, watching a Netflix movie or something. I don't know. <laughs> I know Ben Greenfield. He he snacks on it while his his wife snacks on popcorn at the end of the week. <laughs> So I know that a lot of the listeners are probably thinking what we already know, but they want to know, is this safe for their children to eat as well? Absolutely. Uh, And the way we, um, uh, what our recommendations are for children is give them the same number of tablets as their age. So if they're three, give them three a day, four, give them four a day until they're getting up to teenage uh, ages. And then they could probably have uh, an adult single serving. Now, I do want to say that when I first started the company, as I mentioned, most of our customers were athletes. And so when I was trying to figure out the dosage, I was working with professionals and I started them with 10 spirulina tablets and they weren't feeling the energy. Then I increased it to 15, then 20, 25, still nothing. Once I got to 30 consistently, every single athlete felt that nice increase in energy physically, mentally, boosted their endurance. And so that's where I stopped. I thought, okay, 30 is the magic number. Since then, we're now selling a lot to consumers who aren't, you know, high performance athletes, although we still have lots of those. And so I would encourage people not to worry if you don't take 30. If you find energy and you're hunger satisfied for hours from five or 10, because it can be a little overwhelming to think that, oh, I've got to take 30 tablets. Like anything that you start that's new, start slowly, start small and pay attention to how you're feeling. If you get what you need from a smaller quantity, boom, um, that's good for you. But you can also take much more. Uh, we fuel five NHL teams and the hockey players take three servings of spirulina in their smoothie. So like 75 or 90 tablets ground up in their smoothie before the game to give them the energy. 
And then they take the same amount, another th- three servings, after the game to pull out the lactic acid. Um, I personally probably eat that much at least every day. I have them for breakfast. I have them for snacks. I have them with nuts. I have them, you know, if I can't get to a, a meal, I eat them all day long. So I'm, I'm easily eating three or four servings. I don't think there's really an upper limit. Um, but for your children, start them small. Um, the kids love to chew them, by the way, um, because it turns their tongues green and they turn that into a in, into a game. Um, we, we, or an I've, Instagram I've, post. Our Instagram <laughs> post, right? Uh, pets love them too. Uh, just be aware that once you've given them to your pet, they're going to want more. So it's an expensive treat, but um, it's great that you and your pet can eat the same <laughs> eat the same food. Um, and also because it builds the both of them have high protein in them, and so um, it builds your skin and your hair health as well because your skin of course is is collagen and elastin and your hair is um, keratin but both of which are requiring high protein and uh, so I tell people hey you know when was the last time you snacked on your face cream you know here you can boost so many parts of your body and your health and still you know achieve some uh, levels of beauty at the same time so they're they're good for all ages in Japan if babies can't digest mother's breast milk they um they give them the spirulina in water, and uh, because and I used to wonder how why that was. What 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 was it in the spirulina that was keeping these babies alive when other things like rice milk um, wasn't doing the trick? And it turns out that the nutrient profile of spirulina is almost identical to mother's breast milk. It's the same aminos in the same proportions, and of course it's loaded with GLA, which is that um, glorious essential fatty acid that um, it's gamma linoleic acid that um, helps build the uh, baby's brain with um, within the next two years after after being born. And you need you, we all need that in our brain. So um, between the amino acids and the and the essential fatty acids, um, I think that must be what's keeping them alive. So it's, you know, whether you're a newborn or a granddad, you know, this stuff is good for you. So for our listeners, people that want to learn more about energy bits, recovery bits, where would you recommend they go? Well, I I would um, welcome them to come to our website, which is uh, energybits.com. And uh, we have lots of information there, and, and you can buy large bags of a thousand tablets there. And I have a twenty percent discount. I'd like to share with your listeners. Um, it, when you get to the shopping cart, there'll be a coupon box. That's uh, and so in the po- coupon box, just type the word plant trainers, all one word, and it'll work on every product, every time, all the time. So that's kind of cool. Um, the other thing is, if you don't, if you're not ready for uh, to buy a whole big bag, as a large bag is one hundred twenty dollars, but with the discount i think it brings it down to 96 uh you can go to amazon and buy single servings to try it out um we also sell uh, single servings through hundreds of uh, doctors and nutritionists and chiropractors um it's it's certainly in the u.s so we do have some in the in uh, canada as well and you can find them by going to um our website again energybits.com and clicking find a retailer button at the top and that will type in your zip code or your postal code and that let you know if there's anybody nearby you. Um, so that's how to buy the product. And then we're very active on social, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, we're at Energy Bits. Uh, we also have an uh, Instagram at Beauty Bits, which is um, the brand that we sell into the spa marketplace. It's exactly the same as Energy Bits, but we just made it pink and, and girly. So someone said, oh, you have a boy spirulina and a girl spirulina. And then pretty, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. So thank you very much for sharing a discount code with our audience and all of our people that follow us on our social as well. And we will link to your website and all your socials in our show notes at planttrainers.com so people can connect with you there. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to educate our audience on the benefits of algae and clarifying the differences. And well, we're excited to see you continue to grow. We've seen you from four years ago to where you are now. <laughs> and we're just looking forward to the next phase and, and watching it continue to make people healthier. So thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to thank God I have algae to keep me going. <laughs> <laughs> keep eating it. Keep eating it. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. Thanks a lot.
All the best. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans. It really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant trainers, even supporting us with one dollar really makes a difference in the quality of the show and don't forget to connect with us on instagram and twitter our handle is at plant trainers like plant trainers on facebook join our newsletter and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes a list of our services and of course our latest podcast we encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness so we hope we've inspired you today join us again next time and and have a a healthy day. day. Or is that too corny? It's a little cheesy.